Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's Virtual Kitchen. Today is a really exciting show we have for you. And we have the legend in the house today. Matt, welcome to today's show, Around the Booth, Lessons from the Edge. Jay, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to kick off this show, Around the Booth, Lessons from the Edge, where we're going to drive some peer-based conversation around what's happened during the pandemic, but more importantly, what leaders are doing to drive through. And uh, really looking forward to kicking off today's episode. Awesome. And we'll be right back with some legends and Matt. God, I was thinking, I was like, I said, we have legends in the house. And I, and I said, you, you are a legend. Oh, that's, legend's a big word. That's a lot of pressure on a first show. To, so, but I hope that we can uh, deliver some great conversation for the audience today. But but I see where I, you're going. Uh, I, I, okay. So first of all, I'm going to let you do the intros of these gentlemen that we have in here. And they are truly, when you look at their history, uh, I, I tell you, I was thinking about this, this morning, the amount of history that we have on today's show is probably over 100 and some years experience in this industry and i'm just blown away so thanks again i'm gonna let you do the intro of bringing these amazing gentlemen into the uh, show today you're, you're welcome i'm i just will do a brief introduction and let them tell a little bit about themselves and their businesses but i chose these leaders strategically because the design of the show is to bring leaders forward who are going to vulnerably share share from an honest position but both of them are remarkable leaders in our industry looking at dominic from Pizza Nova, having one of the largest family owned quick service operations in North America, um, but also what he's doing to lead innovation, growth and change, I think is the value he could bring to the audience. And I think Sean and his team at Fab Restaurant Concepts, like we are really what they've done as one of the largest owned pub uh, and restaurant groups in the country, in Canada, but the size of their operation, their ability to scale and how they've been able to navigate that overly competitive pub restaurant space in the last couple of decades, in the last 15 years since I've had a chance to work with Sean. Today's gonna, we're gonna talk a bit about the business and the tactics, but I really wanted to bring leaders forward who are gonna share in a way that I hope will connect with you, whether you're an independent operator or a national chain, we're gonna experience share here so we can collect as a community and hopefully land some of our sharing so it, it really hits for us, so we can act differently inside of our own operations. So with that, I'd love to to start up with Sean. Sean, tell us just a bit about yourself, your operation, your team, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me today. It's a great honor to be part of this show. Uh, my name is Sean Bailey. I'm the president and co-owner, uh, sorry, co-founder of Fab Restaurant Concepts. We're a nine-unit uh, restaurant company in Toronto. We've been in business for about 22 years now. This is our 22nd year. And uh, we employ... We're, we're, it's a seasonal business, so we employ anywhere from 350 in the slow times up to six to 800 people in the summer. Awesome. So really large operation when you look at some of your, especially your waterfront properties here in, in Toronto, which is where your operation is based and some of the landmarks like Brazenhead, we're talking big volume restaurants, large teams, significant capacity and, and some pretty high sales volumes, which adds a uh, add some challenge to the operation and especially to the people side. So I'm excited to dive a little bit more into that as we chat today. And next I'd love to, to introduce Dominic or have him share this, another great friend of mine like Sean, but Dominic, introduce yourself and your, your company and your size and your team. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, Matt for having me on the show and Jay as well uh, with this uh, platform through Cisco. This is awesome. Uh, so thank you to everybody and uh, glad to be on. Uh, I'm the president of Pizza Nova. Uh, it's a family-owned company. We've been uh, around since 1963, so we're hitting our uh, 59th year this year, this coming May. So it's it's been an awesome uh, been an awesome ride, and uh, we can continue on. So uh, we have approximately 150 locations, 
close to 3,000 people that work for the brand. We're fran mainly franchise based. Uh, so, uh, and we, you know, we run a call center and so on and so forth, distribution so, and so on and so forth of, of, from our company. So, uh, you know, that's, that's who we are. And, uh, you know, uh, we love making pizza and uh, delivering great experiences with to, to people. So if you're the audience out there and you're, you're hearing this, I just, we wanted to have a little bit of a dynamic. So we have, you know, restaurant space, uh, Sean bringing that experience forward. And we have Dominic in the quick service space. But again, often in these calls, we look to these celebrity leaders or leaders uh, driving these large brands. But I promise you of having a chance to spend significant amount of time with both Sean and Dominic, what we're focusing on today is the leader, is the experience. There's success leaves clues. So how do these gentlemen and their teams scale the business that they have? And it really is people driven. So that's what we're going to drive through today and discuss more. Um, Jay, before we get going, I see a pop up there. Anything to add as we talk about our intros or before we really get into to Sean and Dominic Sherry? You know, it's interesting because I always, you know, get, I always am interested in the discussion around leadership in our industry. Because our industry really, I think, has a success with leaders. And you see a lot of operators, you know, opening and closing, you know, the old saying, you know, 90% of the restaurants close the first year and it goes up and that percentage increases each year. I think the success, especially with these gentlemen that we have on the show today, both their success is coming also from the fact that you're great leaders and it applies to your business. And I don't see that all the time. And I've met with thousands of restaurants over my career. And I always go, you know what? You can tell a good leader it's going to have a good business. And you see that with the success of your both of your operator operations. And and I get excited about it because I get empowered. And I hope we can also empower other people to really understand what it means to have, be a good leader and also the drive it gives our industry and our, and our restaurants out there. And they connect. If you're not a good leader. Guess what? You're probably flipping restaurants or closing and opening them. And sometimes you got to look in the mirror, right? So it is uh, awesome to have both of you on the show and I'm stoked and I'm going to listen a lot too. So, and learn. So thanks, Matt. No problem. And just to, to go a little bit deeper on that point, I think anybody listening or watching this recording is someone who's looking to grow and advance inside their, their career. So they are leaders and often the bottleneck in an operation. And this is my experience working with hundreds of different leaders or companies is the bottleneck in an operation is the ability for the leader to move forward, but in some ways, respectfully, get out of their own way and inspire those around them. And it's it's my biggest failure in my career. It took me a decade to really get out of my own way to see the growth of the company. But what we're hoping through our share here is how do we share experiences now? So if you're in year one or year two or year five, you can take something from today and hopefully help you not go through as much challenge, stress and possible pain that some everybody on this call has gone through. And the other design is COVID has taken away community and connection. And what we want to do is drive peer-based conversation, peer experiences, best practices, but really just connect. You know, we, we can eat so much with each other on certain streets or neighborhoods, but how do we step back and just really share with each other for to, so we can raise our industry? Because we all know we need it as we rebuild and rebound from the pandemic. Uh, the more that we work together, the more success that we'll have. So we're going to jump right into this. There's a few questions that we framed out. If you saw kind of the promo reel or sizzle reel that Jay put together, and I'm going to take Sean through a couple of questions where he can share. I'll draw on Dominic's experience, um, but we wanted to dive into a few things. And the first question is going to Sean is, you know, what's been the number one challenge or struggle that you experience over the last couple of years? And it is, it is going to focus on the pandemic, but I think there's issues probably that we were just magnified. I say that COVID magnified pre-existing challenges prior to the pandemic. But what have you gone through in the last couple of years that has been most challenging for you, Sean? And we'll we'll flesh that out, talk it through a bit, and uh, see what we can so we get to the root of here. Yeah, for sure. I, I I agree. COVID sort of kicked everyone in the butt. It's sort of uh, we have to somehow survive, <laughs> but at the same time we've got to innovate. And whereas before, I can see us thinking about staying in our lane and not trying to admit a lot of new things. COVID, we, we threw everything at the wall and see what's going to stick. And that was actually the a really exciting part is that the team, my team um, was able to create all kinds of different guest experiences through takeout, meal kits, 
you name it, we tried something different. We tried a ghost kitchen. And a lot of those, a lot of those stuck, but it also gave the ability for everyone to feel comfortable and give some new ideas. So we were happy with that. And also I, I would to say staying motivated was probably the number one, number one challenge. And obviously there's a lot of dark days early on in, in COVID when we did, you know, there's no subsidies. We didn't know what was happening. Um, but I have to say that my team kept me motivated throughout the whole thing. We would have our teams or zoom calls and I log in. Okay. What's, what's the sales today? What's going on? How's everyone feeling? And by the end of it, all these ideas and everyone's positive, we finish it. It's like, all right, time for me to get moving too. I've got to, got to lead this team and we've got to keep everyone motivated and let, let's keep going. And I really appreciate what you shared there on the, the challenging and the dark days. And I think often as leaders, when we're going through those challenging times, we, we can feel alone. Like the often a human behavior is the more challenge we get, the more we isolate ourselves. But kind of, you know, is there a point where you just, there was a morning you woke up, you're having a coffee, or maybe it was, you know, at the end of the night, having a dinner, or maybe a little bit later in the night, having a scotch or something like that. But <laughs> was there a, a time in this experience where just for yourself, it just, it felt heavy? Because I want people to know that there's people going through this still right now. Like the most recent closures or challenges or restricted holiday season, no matter where you were in Canada. But what was kind of the point where, you just sat down and said, this is hard, but now I'm going to do something about it. And, and that's what we'll get into next. But kind of what what's some of the most emotional points that, that you experienced personally during the pandemic? Well, I think there was a number of them. And usually they happen at two or three o'clock in the morning when you couldn't sleep. You get up and, and you're alone with your thoughts and just thinking, OK, what's what's going to happen here? And then a lot of times it's what's the what's the worst that can happen? And then you try and figure out, OK, what's the worst? And can I get out of it? And, and you just went back to our experience and and sort of belief in FAB and, and the belief in everybody that that works at FAB that we've been there for 22 years. We, we've not maybe not seen worse than this, but we've we've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations and we just we can get through it. We just got to work together and stay aligned and stay connected and, and we'll get through this. And if I'm out there listening and what I hear from Sean and really as a coach, my job is to listen to language. But Sean said that there's a point as human beings, we either move away from pain or we move towards pleasure. And most of us move away from pain, it's even 80, 90 percent. So there's this point where Sean's sitting there. It's, it's late at night, can't sleep. I can relate to that fully. Dominic, I'm sure you can as well. But then this innovation period, this pivoting, if we want to use a, a pandemic word, and we talked about all this innovation that happened inside the restaurants. But then we tried things, you know, we tried delivery, ghost kitchen, all of these elements Sean talked about in his open. But if you don't want to hear what he what he ended on there was, then it came down to communicating and connecting with his people. So that's if we look at the pattern of there's a point for all of us where we decide to shift and change. And once we get where we're not going to accept where we are, no matter the size of your operation, biggest or or you know, a relatively owner operated business, there's a point where we'll choose to change. And and you know, from your side, Sean. What, what did you learn about yourself as a leader um, and what did you start to do to rebuild and rebound? If we could talk a little bit about your self-reflection, but how did you create that connection with your team? What was the shift? Because a lot of teams have, I get my phone rings every day of people disconnecting, not coming together during this pandemic. So. Yeah, the key was we did, we did weekly Teams calls. That was really important. As hard as it was to get everyone together and talk about the lowest sales we've ever had in our life. But we kept doing it and, you know, we had some laughs on the calls. We had some innovation. We kept thinking about what's going to happen this summer. What's the training program going to look like? So we're always looking towards the future. And and once we we were able to get our, get open again, I made it a point to do some a lot of one on ones with the with the GMs and the chefs. And that's something that uh, that I've learned is really important, even for my mental health, just so I, I, I can connect with them and I know what they're doing. And how they're feeling as well because you know we talk about leadership if we don't have a good team where it's who are you going to lead you're going to lead nobody so it's important that the team is strong and and they believe in you and believe in the message and what what, what i love there is we, often we share you know we want to be doing one-on-ones or having weekly team meetings and we think as leaders we're doing it for them and i often have leaders commit to a weekly meeting frequency or a one-on-one -on -one, because what sean just shared there's the more i connected with my people the more energy i got you know the more innovation i experienced and you know what he shared you know in, in our conversations as we chatted outside of this is 
that, that consistent communication built trust on all sides. But if you see Sean's physical reaction there, the actual committing to focus time to keep his team connected. And now that we're open, this doesn't stop. Like if we, we need it now more than ever as operations continue to ratchet up into the spring. But um, if you hear anything there is that I took as much as I gave through having a consistent meeting structure. Sean, would you agree with that in what? Yeah, totally. And, and, and really realizing who needs, who needs a bit more attention or where do I, you know, where do I need to be? Do I need to be in finance today, operations? Uh, where do I need to be so that I'm feeling comfortable and that person is feeling comfortable? Awesome. And what's, what's the best innovation or what's the happiest moment you had in one of your team meetings or the best thing that you heard or the most laughs? Like what's this, if we wanted to just share an experience of you brought your team together and out of a meeting, just something, something magical happened. What's one thing, and I know I'm putting you on the spot here that just, you got off the call and said, wow, I'm really happy I did that. Proud of my team. Oh, I think it was probably letting go a little bit. I think uh, it was nice to, to log into a call a week later and hear about things that we had talked about and actually, you know, they're implemented. Uh, we saw sales growth week over week and that everybody was a, excited about what they just did. You know, whether it was an invitation or uh, trying to do a, a BOGO or, or getting out and talking to the community or just trying something new, yeah. which was great to see. Love it. And then just as I will switch over to Dominic, that I'm going to weave these conversations together so we can get some dialogue. Um, but as we do, you know, learning what you've learned over the last couple of years, what is what's your number one focus, you know, for yourself and your team heading through 2022 that that you're going to double down on? You know, we all have a single focus like the Super Bowl coming up. There's a single focus for the remaining teams, although I wish the bills were there. They're not. But for the teams that are remaining, uh, there's a single focus for the Leafs. If anybody, I know there's a lot of people booing me across Canada now for bringing up the Leafs on a call, but the Leafs goals are in the cup. So I appreciate everybody in Calgary, Vancouver, Montreal right now, but but hey, we're in Toronto. I'm in Toronto. So what's that number one thing, Sean, that, that uh, you know is going to lead to success this year? I think, again, staying connected. Staying connected with the team, um, making sure I'm present with the team and listening to you know their concerns their ideas because we saw so much innovation during the lockdown and the last two years that i want to keep that going and, and keep that thriving so just in, to hear that the ability to be present you know there's a great book think like a monk by jay shetty that i read in 2021 and jay shetty says the average human is present eight minutes a day so i'm not looking for us to be and this is a, he you know, decades of study. So if we were present another two minutes a day, just to really be there for our people, because the perception is we're busy, we're running, there's complexity, there's stress. Um, but what I've seen in Sean, when I've watched him meet with his people, you know, it's not just that phones are away and simple things that he's present and, and he's there. So thank you, Sean, for sharing um, on those topics. Uh, Jay, anything to add, just as you kind of hear in the background there before we switch to, to Dominic about what you might, you might hear or, or we'll continue rolling here? You know, I think a couple things that I just get inspired with um, Sean was talking about is just that whole uh, innovation, right? Like I love the Sean that you did virtual <coughs> cooking demos to people that the kids show, sign up, and and I, I think that's what got me excited through COVID. Uh, as soon as the lockdown happened, it was and I'm like I come from an innovative family. Innovation's a big part of my life. Uh, innovator. I would tag myself as, and to see that stuff when the COVID hit, it was like innovation everywhere. People were creating different things. And, and I believe innovation is connected to leadership big time. Um, I, I believe there's a big part of it. I, I believe leaders are innovators and you go back to the people that have changed the world uh, that we look at and we read and we watch. Uh, there's a big innovation part to them. So I, I, I love that. Um, I love the stories. I love the connections. I love the innovation. I love staying connected to the people through the pandemic. All those key points that you're doing is just phenomenal. I, I just think it's so critical. I, I always say this to Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek is one of my favorite um, speakers out there, innovator leaders other than Matt. Just be careful, Jay. Uh, is, uh, is he always says, all you have to do is just make people feel safe. And they will just make do amazing things and i truly believe in that all the time and everything i do is just make you feel people feel safe because they're always worried about something or whatever they're and through COVID, there was so much worry uh going on and uh, i tell you we had amazing leaders over here at cisco that just made us feel safe 
and took care of us. And I see that from the restaurants that made it through and their staff and people like yourselves. Uh, I guarantee it, you made your people feel safe. And I think that's really awesome to hear. So there's my two bits. And one thing that I would add to Jay and Sean there is uh, the the innovative side. And as we draw Dominic into the conversation now is, is there is innovation, but I also see disruptor or disruption across, you know, Jay and Cisco. Um, how I met Jay is I reached out and I said, some of this is not, you know, a, a pump for Cisco on this, but it is. I said, Jay, there's people that are winning the pandemic as suppliers and there's not, and we're winning because you're disrupting and bringing value to the market. Sean disrupted his team by communicating. Sean disrupted his team by, by his community, by innovating. You know, they want to be their neighbor's first choice as a pub design and a restaurant option design. But just that disruption in the market is an opportunity. It's sitting there for us to take right now. And we have a choice. And I think if you looked at the patterns of these three three gentlemen and future people on the show is we really are the innovative side, but disruption is the execution of innovation, consistent execution, relentless execution. So Hey Matt, uh, thank, can, yep. can I can I ask both Dominic and Sean this? Because because uh, thank you uh, for including me. I think you did into those three guys is 100%. is is uh, um, on the disruption side. Do you guys find it scary sometimes being being that disruptor or right? Do you find it yeah. scary, John Dominic? Jump it's in a lot of risk. risk. It's a lot of risk, right? A lot of risk. But that's COVID is all risk. Now that's like oh, that's, this is nothing. I made it through COVID, so that was the riskiest part. Dominic, so what do you think? Did you find it scary being that guy? Um, to a certain degree, yes, because you're not sure what's going to happen on the other end, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's as as Sean said, it's a risk, but you know, sometimes we have to take uh, risks, and as leaders, that's what we do, and and as innovators, as you said, that's what we do. We need to take that risk and. You know, you're going to have your followers and you're not going to and you're going to have the ones that just say, you know what, what are you thinking? You're, you're crazy. They're going to throw darts at you. But at the end of the day, uh, you're not going to win them all. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, we try to do the best for our organizations and first and foremost, our people, because the people want to be part of a winning team. They don't want to be part of a losing team. So the so I want to jump in on that just one more time. Sorry, sorry, Matt, no. uh, is that I guarantee it both of you allow for mistakes to happen sure right yeah like and you guys probably embrace them into a point like, listen i remember yeah i remember saying to one of my my team this is a few years ago is way before COVID, is if i don't see you making mistakes you're not trying to do something different right like because not all of them are going to be a home run and and when i don't see people making mistakes and you think you're hitting a, a home run all the time I know it's not going to work. I know there's problems in there or whatever. It's just not the case. But I remember, I remember, it was one slide I put up. It's like, make mistakes, embrace mistakes, and I know that you're learning and trying new stuff. And uh, you see how many companies are like, well, I don't know how to innovate in this and that because you're probably not embracing mistakes yeah. or failure, right? Yeah, we can't be perfect. I mean, it, there's can't be perfect, right? Perfect. And we're going to make mistakes. It's just what do we learn from them, and how do we, yeah. you know steer them back onto the right course if you will right our industry sometimes doesn't allow though that much mistake room because of how difficult our industry is well to, to that <laughs> point jay i think it's because we're trying to please a customer that <laughs> exactly. we're as good yeah. we're as good as our last meal yeah, yeah. exactly so, i like that yeah so it's hard right definitely we're very difficult and well, we got like, comments we coming through oh, no we don't so the ability to make mistakes is, you know, there's there's guest facing mistakes and then there's backstage innovation and in mistakes. And I think you know, allowing permission for our teams to make mistakes that don't necessarily negatively impact the guest experience is we're, we're trying to get better. And one question in, in outside coaching that I've asked both Sean and Dominic is, are we playing to win or are we playing not to lose? And somebody asked me, my coach asked me that question and I was very offended, but it's a question I ask all of us. Like now it's, now is not the time you want to be, you know, within your own comfort zone, but playing safe is dangerous right now. You know, yeah. let's, we want to play to win. And again, if we look at the patterns of Dominic and Sean is they're, they're playing to win inside their, their own businesses. And, and Dominic, to go a little bit deeper and not sure if you have a common thread with Sean or not, but what was, what was your number one challenge that you experienced during the pandemic and, and the thing that kind of really stood out most for you as you've navigated through these last couple of years? This for me. This for you, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, Matt, I think um, 
you know, one thing I, I should say, <laughs> we were lucky enough to be deemed essential because we're QSR and we're delivering takeout. So by the most part. So unlike Sean, where they had to close their restaurants and it's a, that's a whole another, uh, you know, uh, I commend uh, Sean for and his team for what they've done. But I mean, it, it is, we are a little bit different in that case. So, but however, the when the pandemic hit, you know, the bottom opened up and we didn't know when we were going to hit the bottom uh, because everything just stopped. Government said everybody stay home and so on and so forth. And we're being mainly a franchise based system when in our system, as I kind of summarize it, it's we're a collection of small businesses under one brand. And, you know, a lot of our franchisees who have spent or have invested, I should say, uh, you know, sometimes their life savings into our into our brand. You know, they don't know what's happening either, and and everybody's you know looking to the leader, and here I am, the leader, and I don't know where where to go, and so on and so forth, because this is all as you know, the magic word that was used right at the beginning was unprecedented, unprecedented. So it's it definitely was very difficult, and you know until we got ourselves, uh, you know. To, uh, organized and and how do you organize and it's by communicating and you continue to communicate and, and continue to talk to everybody but the, one of the biggest challenges that i found during that especially that time and continues on till today but the biggest thing was the mental health because um you know we're talking with people we're we're communicating and we're all going off on different ramp ramparts and, and so on and so forth that you know, we don't know where, 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 why is this coming about and so on and so forth. And that, you know what, at the end of the day, that includes me as well. You know, listen, I'm not perfect. I, and, and I have my, I've had bad days as well and it's going to happen. But I mean, the thing is, is over the period of time, sometimes we get caught in a rut and throughout this uh, challenge, throughout this couple of years, I find that sometimes we all got caught in a rut and, and we have to get out of that rut, if you will. And, and Dominic, how did it like, cause I want, there's so much power in saying that, right? So a lot of leaders I talked to needed to have the answer. You know, they needed to, they felt like they had to have the answer. What I just heard you say is there's certain points where I didn't, nobody had all the answers, but you're able to take your power back by not trying to present it, uh, an answer. But to say that at times you got, you were in a rut at times, you know, you had to communicate when there wasn't necessarily clarity as such a successful family run business, how did that feel for you? Probably for one of the first times, I'm sure there's been others, but one of the first times in this dynamic, not to have the answer, how did that feel for you as a leader? Um, it's stressful, uh, Matt. Uh, I think it becomes very stressful because you're not, because everyone's looking for you to get give the right answer, whatever that right answer may be. Uh, and in, in this type of environment, um, I don't think there is a right answer because somebody will say, well, no, that's the wrong answer. Somebody will I'll say, well, that's the right answer for for themselves. So we're trying to please everyone uh, as much as we can. And, you know, it was difficult and it still is difficult, right? I mean, we're open and when everybody else is in lockdown and the government is telling everybody to stay, stay home. So we're having issues with with, with, with every, you know, with our franchisees, our staffing, and everybody. I mean, it's because there's mixed, too many mixed messages out there, and it's hard to take those messages and and kind of, you know, use it uh, to 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 try to to gain and and say, you know, we're we're open, we're allowed to stay open. What you know, we're here for you. You know, you come back and you know, and so on and so forth. So it's. You know, one thing is that um, we need to, and the biggest thing is, is communication, and that's how you get through it. And I think that's what we've learned. And one thing that I, I love in that, and I've I've talked, I've had a, my phones ring a lot, and you know, Dominic, we've talked to, I've had somebody push me, and and even Jay share with me that it's, it's okay for it not to be okay. 
you know, at a certain point. And that's like, as leaders, like we're, we're designed and hardwired and whether we built it ourselves or it came from our childhood experiences or whatever it is, we're, we're hardwired as leaders to have the answer. And there's a little bit of freedom and, you know, taking our power back. And, and again, what I heard in this, it's okay for it not to be okay, but you kept communicating. Um, yes, definitely. And you know what? And, and you do hear from your people too, right? Even from certain, from, from our franchisee, franchisee group and so on and so forth. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of them that would reach out and say, you know what, thank you, thank you for clearing it up, or whatever the may case may case may be. You know, they understand the situation that they everybody's in, and they and they're grateful for being open and and so on and so forth. But you know, but throughout the the, the pandemic, you know, we kind of from a from a a uh, support office uh, uh, point of view, we we we. We had our district managers continue to, to, to visit our, our locations or, or call and speak to the franchisees. Uh, we, we continued with, you know, moving forward, even we had a couple store openings, new store openings. We had, you know, some menu innovation. And so we continue to, 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 to strive and, and try, to, try to normalize things, although in, in, a, uh, in, a diff- in a lockdown environment. So, you know, things took a little longer took time, but we got through it. So, so Matt, yeah, I'll jump in here on a question. We have a question here from Adam and Adam, thanks again for sending your question in there. What suggestions from both of you? We have a lot, you know, a lot of people that watch our show and stuff like that are small independent single, you know, restaurants, single lunch spots, small little bistros. What would you say from your experience? Cause you all started with a small one place restaurant at one time. Um, what would you say to someone in that, I guess, sphere of our industry that only has one location right now to keep moving and to build their business right now, you know, through COVID, they've been rattled. What recommendations or suggestions or even um, inspiration comments you might say to those folks out there right now? They're going to be listening to this. Well, that's a great question. Um, I think it is a great question. It's not my question. I wish it was, but the question, Adam. There you go. Um, I think you know we got to, as you said earlier on, Jay. Uh, we're we're an industry that's very resilient, and I think that uh, that is a great trait that uh, you know restaurateurs, entrepreneurs have, is that we continue to strive and try to to continue to do better. And we got to keep our heads up. Uh, yes, we, it's been tough. And through, uh, you know, through this type of pandemic, uh, as Sean uh, we could attest to that, you know, they had the closed stores and they pivoted certain different ways. And I've had a lot of friends that are in that situation as well. Uh, I think we got to keep our heads up and uh, really believe that um, it's going to come back and we're, we're going to strive as an industry again. Uh, I truly, truly believe that because as humans, we need to get out. I mean, we're doing this on, we're doing this virtually because of the situation, but you know what, wouldn't this be a great uh, uh, well, we'll, presentation we'll have you. you know, when you showed at the beginning, <laughs> the kitchens and the food, we'd be all together in some kitchen and enjoying breaking bread yeah. as well. So that, that's funny. There. Yeah. Me and Matt we're, were talking about that. Like throughout the booth, be like, yeah, yeah. we're all in the booth, chit chatting this and that. Oh, those days idea. will come. Those days will come. Yeah. So I think we got to keep our heads up and keep positive. And and uh, you know, it's it's tough. Believe me, I, I understand it. I mean, as I said, mental health is is one of the hardest things to get through because we get down very quickly. Uh, you know, it's another day of closure, another day that I, I got to make payment to something, and and I got nothing coming in, and so on and so forth. But you know, and and that's tough. So if regarding the small restaurant tour. You know, take advantage. Definitely take advantage of all those government programs that are, that were available. I hope you did, uh, because it, it does help get through thing. Get help you get through it, and you know, stay positive and get your people back in as slowly. And you know, it's almost a restart. We got to get back, start training again, because training and coaching your people is is important. Because you can't just open the doors and and uh, and think that everybody's ready to roll again. It, 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 there's a reset, and and if you give in our industry, as I said earlier, it's all about the, the meal and the last meal that you had with them, but give them 
that great human human interaction with with the new with the customer coming in it might be a new customer it may not even be your old customer that comes in any longer so it's how you, how you treat them and uh, give great kind of great uh, experience and that's my uh, you know I guess you can say two cents worth. <laughs> I think it's a full nickel. It's good. <laughs> Was that a full nickel? Yeah, a full <laughs> nickel. Thanks, John. No, I, I would echo what you said. It, we're definitely a resilient industry. Um, I do hate the word pivot, though. I'm so sick yeah. and tired of it. But I like I like innovation or surviving, whatever that whatever you want to say. But you know, as a restaurant tour, I think you know what your guest wants. You know, they want to be back in your restaurant. They want to. They want to interact. So how do you connect with your guest again somehow if we're going to be reopened soon, but when we were closed? So is it a virtual cocktail class, pizza making class, what, whatever? Because mm -hmm. um, people still want the same things. You know, people are going to come back and we're say, oh, it'll be the new normal somewhat. But I think at the same time, people still want to connect. They want to come into our into our restaurant, into our spaces. They want to have a great experience. And as restaurateurs, we know what what that is we're we're good at it and i'm sure that person is, is great at it so think about that how do you make sure the guest has a great experience how do you invite your your uh, employees to come back make them feel safe get them excited about it because you got to remember they've even tougher than us i mean i'm not sure how they survived on some of that uh the subsidies it was really tough and and I appreciate it, Jay. Let me know if there's more to tie, but I just, you know, in respect to kind of looking at closing out our show, we didn't script this, but you have two leaders, one rest, you know, restaurant based business, one QSR based business. But if I'm listening to this, I didn't hear tactics. You know, I didn't hear capital investment. I didn't hear all of the changes. I heard it. The foundation is communicating and engaging with our people that are going to lead our restaurants forward to create a connected experience with our guests, whatever that looks like for you. So I think the the exciting part is we all have people, whether you're a solopreneur or you're a team of three, or you have a team of thousands like Dominic and hundreds like Sean, that our results, we can't do it alone. You don't have to do it alone, but it's communication is the foundation of trust. And then obviously we, we, we need to stay focused on designing a remarkable guest experience to draw people back inside the four walls of our restaurant. And if everybody takes a little bit away from Adam, Jay, I'll let you close this out here. Okay. I think it will lead to more clarity and, and focus for, you know, I've taken a lot from both of you and I really appreciate it because um, our wiring in our companies, everything we do is relentlessly about our guest or what we call our customer. And if we've lost that plot, we'll lose, we'll lose the game. Jay, any thoughts to close this out? No, first of all, I just want to thank all of you, um, Dominic, Sean, and just, Thanks again for sharing your stories, your information, stuff like that. Inspiring. And I'm so glad you're still around because I'm coming to Toronto to both check your places out. Uh, not all the hundred and some you have there. Dominic. No problem. Uh, I will definitely order your pizza. I, first of all, if you haven't listened to the Pizza Nova song, check it out on YouTube. There's like I, I was noticing there's over 100,000 listens of that song. I hope you get royalties from YouTube on that, but it, by the <laughs> way, <laughs> that's crazy. And it is I catchy because I was caught myself this morning. I was actually <laughs> close and it's catchy, but thank you again. And Sean, thanks again for your inspiration and stuff like that, what you're doing with your pubs. And I just love it. And the virtual uh, experience, I saw that and I was like, man, that's a great idea. I um, I wish I was doing that. I kind of am doing that. But, uh, and then Matt, thanks again for your inspiration on leadership. It's so important in our industry. I think the other thing, when, just at the end there, is uh, comments back to what Adam was talking about. Don't do this alone. Don't do this alone. And this doesn't mean that we have to get mushy and be together and stuff like that. But don't do this alone from your business and get out there and try to, I don't need the government, you know, programs or I don't need to connect. The biggest success that I've heard through the pandemic and I've interviewed 300 and some different shows is the people that actually got together. And I may have shared an idea or a marketing strategy, got on a call, did a show like this. Whatever it is, the strengths came from being together. Um, and our industry became really small, I felt, because everyone started knowing everyone and started helping each other out to different shows and different comments, different events and whatever. Uh, but don't do it alone. And, and reach out to distributors. 
right? Like th- this one, maybe here, right there, that one. And, and we will help you and we have every resource there is and use them. Um, right. We have teams to do that. And there's teams out there and there's companies out there that will do that, but definitely use the government programs, use whatever you can, but don't do it alone. Don't, don't think. And, and trust me, I've seen so many places that tried to, and they just didn't make it. So don't do it alone. There's my last comments, but thank you all of you for being on the show and Matt hosting your first show on our network. And it's a pleasure. So uh, we'll see you. Bye to you guys. Thank you. Right. We'll see you guys later. We're going to try this. We're going to try this little chat after kind of thing going on. We're going to remove those guys. There you go. They can still hear us if they want to. Oh, they're leaving. So (laughs) Matt, thanks again. What a great show. To be able Thank to you. listen to these these industry legends, like 32 years, 22 years. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of years, man. Yeah, you look at just the experience. And, and what I like most about the leaders is you talk about the amount of challenge, like look in the quick service space, the amount of competition in the pizza space. So how do you carve yourself out, you know, part of that? How do you carve yourself out a slice? And, you know, they've got quality service or, or the foundations of of what they've done and look what Sean like Sean's had to go through you know Toronto core financial crisis non-smoking pandemic you know this yeah. isn't a 20 year history expansion you know it's uh the odds are, are stacked are stacked against but definitely some very common common trends across what the two of them are sharing in, in fundamentally different operations but what they're sharing is there's a pattern there that we can all learn from and, and you know what's funny because we didn't get into the blame game and I don't, I, 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 that's the best thing about what we do with our network and our shows is the blame game. I'll leave that to the, the social media feeds and yeah. that stuff. Um, TikTok, but um, uh, not to throw a name out there, I'll probably get banned now. Um, but <laughs> just went I, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but we didn't play the blame game, you know, they, they don't do that. And I truly believe those that defines a leader is ones that takes responsibility, adjust pivots i don't like that word but pivots changes uh and makes things uh just happen and we heard that today from these both guys and i just thanks again for inviting them putting this all together for us um what do you think what, what are you gonna do for your next one next show i've got you know there's a there's a couple leaders that we have lined up um we're gonna go a little bit west coast so we had some east coast representation we're gonna go we're gonna go west um we're gonna bring um a couple leaders that i deeply deeply respect but we want to talk more about how do we start uh, consuming motion? So how do we, you know, just moving, doing stuff and things. Most mm-hmm. leaders I talk to say they got to the end of their 60 hour work week and look back and say, what did I really do? Did I move oh, forward yeah. towards my goals? So we're going to talk about the difference between motion um, and start talking about action and execution. We're going to talk about stop consuming. The you know, content became free during the pandemic. So we, what I want you to do, and I urge you, if you just gave us 42 minutes of your time, commit to one thing, do something different. Um, whatever that is. And Jay shared some brilliance there, so did Dominic and Sean. But, you know, if you're going to provide the time, I encourage you to commit to action. So we're going to focus on moving from idea to some leaders that are going to come through and talk about, you know, when were they not executing? What had to shift for them? And what does what does an execution folks strategy look for, look like for them in a way that you can take it, you know, no, no matter if you're Kevin, I believe his name is Kevin, or if you're somebody running a large group, it all matters on our ability to keep moving forward. Awesome stuff, Matt. Matt, thanks again. Matt, if people want more information to contact you, where can they find more information? Uh, the best place to go is mattrolf.com. Um, we have a bunch of information there. There's a bunch of free video content. Uh, we've got information on our new book, You Can't Do It Alone, um, an opportunity for me to- Oh, well, this one right here that I happen to oh, have right now. Oh, oh, he's got it. Look okay. at that. Yeah, I heard someone's looks... reading this for you too. Yeah, I heard, I heard there's an audio book coming out. With somebody <laughs> I heard so too. Right, how, how crazy is that? Just right there. Right. Um, just happened to be there. Um, the other just thing is that to be there. go on LinkedIn. We put out a video a day on LinkedIn that's looking to put out content. So I travel, I speak to leaders all day, every day. We're looking to do short 60, 90, 90 minute clips every day of the week to take what I hear and share it with the audience. My goal is to give away as much value as possible. And, and I, I love this industry. I grew up in it. It's my home. It's my life. And if I can do anything to help us rebuild and rebound, Jay, like you're working more hours than anybody in our industry right now. And we're trying to help. Um, this isn't about a show. Yeah. It really is trying to get back and help. Exactly. So on that note, Matt, we're going to run the the reel out or the trailer or whatever it is. But thanks again for doing what you're doing. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank